Geometry problems don't always need complicated diagrams and trigonometry. Sometimes the cleanest solution comes from an unexpected place, linear algebra. When most people think of linear algebra, they think of computing numbers, multiplying matrices, and solving equations. But it turns out linear algebra is also a powerful tool for tackling real-world geometry, like figuring out the exact angles needed for precise carpentry cuts. In our last video, we used 4D vectors to solve the carpenter's pyramid problem. This time, we're taking on a different challenge, one that doesn't require four dimensions, but still benefits from the power of vector geometry. Last time, we left you with a little homework. Define the angles needed to make these cuts on a rectangular-based pyramid. If you haven't seen our last linear algebra video yet, click here or check the link in the description. You'll want to catch up first. Now there are multiple ways to tackle this problem. We'll go over the solution that uses only what we've learned so far in our linear algebra series, but we'll discuss a few other ways you could have approached this problem too near the end. Here's the setup. We have a 10 by 4 rectangular based pyramid whose top is 6 units from the base. And since this shape does not have rotational symmetry, we're looking for these three unique angles in order to make our cuts for this wooden pyramid. Now these two angles will be easy. We'll use the same process as before. All we need is this formula. So for angle AMJ, we need to know vectors MA and MJ, as well as their lengths. And for angle AWK, we need to know vectors WA and WK, as well as their lengths. The values in a vector are naturally thought of geometrically as radiating from the origin. So in order to find a vector like mj, we can subtract the coordinate points for j and m. Notice how mj has the same values as point d, but remember d is a fixed coordinate point, while mj is a vector. It's not tied to coordinate points and can exist anywhere on our diagram and maintain that same value. Now the length of mj should be pretty obvious, 4. But not all these lengths will be. To find the length of a vector, you square root the dot product of the vector with itself. We learned this in this video here. And look at that, we still get 4. Now let's do the same process for all other vectors we need. Plugging these into our formula, we get that the measure of amj is about 71.6 degrees and the measure of AWK is about 50.2 degrees. To make our pyramid pieces, we need to cut these in half, so we'll set our saw blade to 35.8 and 25.1 degrees, respectively. These two angles can also be easily found with trigonometry, by dropping a segment from the apex to the base, making some triangles, calculating lengths, and then using arc cosine. If you need to look any of this over before we move on to the harder angle in this problem, pause the video here. The third angle is going to take some thinking outside the box. We have to be careful here because the perspective can change the apparent measure of an angle in three dimensions. Look at this angle. When parallel to the screen, it looks about 80 degrees. But if I rotate it away, now it looks wider, more like 100 degrees. So how do we find the true angle for this edge? Our general strategy for finding the angle is the same. We take two vectors off this edge that lie in these two adjacent planes. But there are a lot of vectors from this edge that lie in these two planes. We have to find the ones that are orthogonal to the edge and also lie in those planes. So where should we place these vectors so they are orthogonal to the edge AB? That is the big question here, and what makes this problem more challenging than the last two angles. To start, let's place point P at the midpoint of AB. It can really be anywhere along AB, but choosing the midpoint will simplify some aspects for us. Next, we can place point Y along line EB to help make a vector in the left face, and point X along line BC to help find a vector in the right face. The vectors at PY and PX are two vectors in these planes, and we can vary the point Y and X to help us find out when the vectors are orthogonal to line AB. If YP and PX are orthogonal to AB, then their dot products must equal zero, 
We learned this in a previous linear algebra video. Now we don't know yp or px yet, but we can find ab. It's the difference between point A and B, which gives us vector negative five to six. Now let's find PX. We don't know where point X is on the line BC, but we do know that vector PX is just a scaled version of vector BC. So that means vector BX equals K times vector BC. While we don't know BX or K, we do know BC. It's the change from point B to C, which gives us vector 0, 4, 0. The last piece of the puzzle is understanding the relationship between PX, BX, and BP. Pause here to take a moment to think about it. There are multiple ways to express this relationship, but since we're trying to find PX, we'll write it like this. PX is the difference between BX and BP. Plugging in the expressions we already found for BX and BP, we now have an expression for PX that we can plug back into our orthogonal dot product from the beginning and solve for K. Simplifying everything, we get K equals 4.0625, which means PX equals 2.5, 15.25, negative three. We can do the same process to find YP. I'll just show the work here quickly, but feel free to pause at the end and look over it if you want to. We end up with L equals negative 0.65, which means YP is negative four, negative one, negative three. To find the angles between these two vectors, we need our cosine similarity function, solve for theta, and our last step is to find the lengths of PX and YP and plug everything in. We get the length of px is the square root of 247.8125, and the length of yp is the square root of 26. Taking the dot product of px and yp divided by their lengths and taking the arc cosine gives us an angle of 101.7. Divide that in half and our final angle is 50.8 degrees. Wow, that was a lot of work. Not as slick as doing our last problem in four dimensions. But this is just a hard problem, especially if you don't know basic geometry and trigonometry. Give the problem a shot with just those two tools. It is possible, but a lot more work than using linear algebra. There are other ways to solve this problem if we know a little more linear algebra too. For example, to find our orthogonal vectors, we could slice the pyramid with a plane through point P that is orthogonal to line AB. Then we could find where the plane intersects another line in the plane defined by the adjacent faces of the pyramid. But to do that, we need to know how to construct the equation of lines and planes in three dimensions using information from the situation. Do you know how to find the equation of a plane through a point that is orthogonal to a line? We will tackle that and other related questions in another video. Let us know in the comments how you solve this problem. We'd love to hear all the different solution methods. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and share our videos. Be sure to follow Math the World on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Thank you so much for your support.